and welcome to Shifton Hall in Halifax and Lister's historic home. We're really delighted that you can join us here today to mark 180 years since her death, age 49, on the 22nd of September in 1840 on her travels in Georgia. Anne, as you will know by now, was a remarkable person. She was born in 1791. She was a diarist, a traveller, an entrepreneur, a landowner, a scholar and a lesbian. We're really happy that you can join us here at Shibden, her historic home, which has now been made famous by Calderdale's very own Sally Wainwright, who took Anne Lister's story global with her TV show, Gentleman Jack. Anne Lister's diaries of five million words have already been noted to be of global significance. They're on the UNESCO Memory of the World Register. But really it's thanks to Sally Wainwright and her show that Anne Lister now has a global audience. So in the broadcast today, we're going to hear about different aspects of Anne's life. We're going to start with a behind the scenes peek at the museum with Sheridan Crompton, one of the room stewards at Shipton Hall. Then we'll revisit the highlights of an interview with Helena Whitbread, one of the Anne Lister experts, and she will set the context for Anne's life and the society that Anne lived in. Then we'll hear from Rachel Lappin, and it was really important to us to get an individual perspective on Anne's impact on individuals across the world, because we've heard from so many of you about how she's changed your life. Rachel uh, works on the Anne Lister Birthday Weekend. She's Halifax Director of Operations. She also collaborates with Jill Liddington and she's a gay woman. And this is a perspective we really wanted to reflect today. After that, we'll move to a more reflective moment when the Mayor of Calderdale, Councillor Dot Foster, will lay a wreath on behalf of all of us to give thanks for Anne's life and the legacy she's left us. After that, you'll have a fun little love letter from those of us in Calderdale who work on Anne Lister, and you'll hear about why we love her and the things that make her special. Afternoon, and welcome to a behind the scenes look at Shibden Hall, the home of Anne Lister. Anne Lister was determined, she was remarkable, and she loved life, and I think more than anything, the love of Anne's life was Shibden Hall. So where we are in the house body, uh, in this room Anne did major renovations. Um, she lifted the ceiling up to the height that it is now. She put the staircase in, as you can see it, with the Lister Lion on there. Uh, anybody who's been to the hall, uh, when they come in, always recognise it off Gentleman Jack, as it was used in many scenes, along with the room at the back of me, along with the room in the far corner. Then behind me is the lady herself. Up on the wall, there's a portrait of Anne, along with her auntie Anne and her Uncle James. It was Uncle James who left the hall to Anne Lister in his will. So we're in what Anne would call the library passage. This is my personal favourite uh, room in the house. It's when I spend a lot of time when I'm here. And it goes up into Anne's bedroom. Again, um, Anne did renovations in this particular room. She had this made into a library so she could keep all the books in there. She had it all shelved out. Um, we've recently found out as well, due to a diary uh, transcription, that she had these awful stairs put in. They were done by a chap called Mr. Wilson, uh, and they're very high, um, oddest looking steps I've ever seen, I have to say. Um, but previous to that, it would have been a solid wall across, and it went into what would have been the closet in Anne's bedroom. But she had it opened up so she could pop out of her bedroom into the library passage. And then also of interest, maybe this room at the end, which was a porch chamber, but it also has some panelling on there and we believe it's where Anne's diaries were found when we think John Lister hid them away. So we do believe it's a piece of the panelling behind there. We're not entirely sure which one, but that's where we think that John Lister put them for safekeeping. So here we have Anne Lister's um, funeral hatchment. A funeral hatchment was placed outside the building um, where the person lived to let people know that they had unfortunately passed away. So Anne's would have been hung outside the building or even perhaps on the gates, we're not entirely sure, for any time up to a year. It was normally people of gentry or of a certain social standing that had the hatchments. Once it was taken down, it would have gone to what would be the John the Baptist Church in Halifax, which is now Halifax Minster. And then later on, John Lister, the last Lister to live here, fetched this hatchment and two other hatchments back to Shibden for safekeeping when they were being removed from the church. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. In the middle there, it has the Lister family crest. And then at the top, it has what we call a memento mori, which means um, basically it's um, the deceased soul going up to heaven. And that's Anne Lister's funeral hatchment. Right, we're in Anne Lister's bedroom. Um, this wasn't used in Gentleman Jack due to the size of it. Uh, they built a set 
because uh, it's far too small. In the far corner, you can see the area that we were talking about previously with the little stairs going down, which would have originally been a closet, which Anne would have used. Um, she also took the ceiling up in here to make it a lot higher. Um, at one time it had a fireplace in as well, but that's been removed obviously after Anne's time. Um, she had a fantastic view, which you can't see from where I'm standing. Um, it's a really warm room, it gets sun all day long, so you can understand why Anne wanted this as her bedroom. This is going to be a real uh, behind the scenes exclusive because if you've ever been to Shibdin, you've probably seen this sign that says private and that's because this is the entrance to Anne's Tower, probably one of the grandest additions to Shibdin Hall. Um, I'm going to take you up the stairs and up into the library, um, so follow me. So here we go, up the spiral staircase. It's a little bit twisty and then we come to the middle floor. So here we are in the middle floor of the tower. If you visited Shibden again, you would be able to see it from the north chamber, which is just through this glass here. So Anne would be able to get through there, up these stairs, into the middle floor, which then would take you up to the second set of stairs, which is a spiral staircase up to the top floor to the library. OK, we're nearly there. So here we are. Uh, in the tower, so this is really exclusive for you because members of the public don't get to come up here. Um, it's Anne's library tower that she had built to keep all her, um, the light of her book collection in, which was quite extensive. Um, we used to think that she never saw it completed, but thank you to Anne Choma for sharing some research that uh, she came across, shows that now she did and her and Anne got to enjoy it. I do believe that Anne Walker is said to have been sat painting in here, um, which is absolutely fantastic news. When I walked into the Calderdale archives in 1983, I wanted to do a short article on Anne Lister. The archivist said, did you know she kept a diary? I said, can you put some of it up for me? It was a page of Anne's secret code. And then from then on, I was intellectually hooked. 32 years later, I am still working on the journals of Anne Lister. I have lived my life in the company of this vibrant woman. Anne's journal starts with the tiny emotive phrase, just three words, Eliza left us. And that was the beginning of her voluminous journals of 6,600 pages and over two million words. What emerged was she was depicting her life as a lover of women. That was quite an astounding thing for me to uncover, given the sexual mores of the day. Anne's information was so explicit that you virtually knew it was highly sexual. She was on a mission to try and define and understand and interpret her own lesbian identity. She was a truly remarkable woman. Anne was born uh, in Halifax, not in Shibden Hall. She was born in a house called St Helens at the bottom of New Bank, people who know Halifax will know what I'm talking about when I say it was at the junction of Newbank and Range Bank, which uh, are still there, but uh, not quite as well known. At the age of seven, Anne was sent away to a dame school in Ripon because her mother could not control her. Her father, of course, was away on his military duties. Um, her mother was quite a, a weak woman, pretty woman. She was only 18 when she got married to um, Jeremy Lister. He was a hardened veteran, 36 years old, not very sympathetic towards his uh, delicate wife. And um, Anne was such a strong personality, even as a child. As she said, I used to, uh, when I was supposed to be safe in bed, I used to climb out of the bedroom window and go running into town, seeing wild women and other things that she shouldn't have been seen as a child. So at seven, she was sent to this dame school in Ripon. She was there for two years. She said, I was whipped every day, probably to take the tomboy out of her. It didn't work, but she seemed quite happy. I think it was done more in sorrow than in anger by the two ladies who ran the school. She was a woman of mystery. In 1817, she decided to wear all black clothing. Went to tea at Cliff Hill, she said. I wore black for the first time. Now, this immediately 
was set her apart from the other young ladies of her age. White was the predominant colour in that era for young unmarried women to wear. So Anne, with her long black clothes, her black hat, her stout walking boots, she was a figure of interest, if not prurient interest. She was a woman of mystery. But everybody wanted to know her. It was, it was considered to be prestigious if Miss Lister invited you to tea, which she rarely did. Uh, but it was even prestigious if she joined your household for tea. It became the fashion to go abroad and do what was known as the European tour. And, and many lady travellers uh, could do that if they had the money and the time, which Anne Lister had. So she decided to go to Paris to continue her education. And um, her first visit there was in 1819. And from then on, she was definitely um, a, a Francophile and um, she had um, quite a number of years resident in Paris. And while she was there, she went to all the lectures given by the leading scientists of the day, uh, Baron Cuvier, for instance. Um, she um, also had um, a little dissecting chamber sat, set up, a little attic on the left bank. She draped it all with sheets, and she had a young medical student, Monsieur Juliart, to bring her specimens from the hospital that uh, were discarded after they'd been amputated. Um, she had a woman's arm, uh, for instance, and she would peel all the, the skin and the flesh and study the muscles and the, and the bones. She had a fetus of an unborn baby. He once brought her a woman's head and uh, her hair was so full of lice that she had to burn it all off before she could start stripping the scalp down. She was a truly remarkable woman. I had quite a lot of moral dilemmas about what I felt I could publish and what I shouldn't publish or, or didn't want to publish. And I confided in a fellow historian once and he said, history is fair game. And I felt better after that. But I published the things that I did because I thought they were so important to the lesbian world. Anne Lister's account of what it feels like to live life as a lesbian in an era when there was no language for that sort of sexuality, when people brushed it aside or refused to recognise it, it's so educational about how she dealt with it that I, th I think it's so valuable to women who have that sexuality. And I do know from the responses, letters and, that I've had, People have said to me that the book changed their lives, that they felt they could come out freely because, look, this is Anne Lister. You know, look what she did in her age. And I think it's given a lot of young women and older women, perhaps, who were closet lesbians, the courage to come out. In fact, I know it has. The power of one small book. So, Anne Lister, I mean, where do you start? Laura's already covered um, what we all know her for, uh, but why is she so special and what does she mean? To, to me, and I think, I, I can't speak on behalf of the whole kind of gay community, but I hope what I feel uh, will represent maybe what a lot of you watching now um, also feel. I first came across Anne Lister and this magnificent Shibden Hall um, quite a few years ago now. Uh, I was fortunate to get a copy of Helena Whitbread's book, I Know My Own Heart. Um, and I think it's fair to say I was riveted uh, at that point. Um, couldn't believe what I was reading. It was just, what a story, this woman from the early 19th century uh, and writing in detail just about uh, every part of her life from such a young age, from about the age of 15. Uh, I first visited Shibden about 20 years ago and uh, back then it was just me, uh, the single member of staff who was on duty. Uh, I think I was probably the only person that member of staff saw all week um, and I had the place to myself and I can't describe the feeling, I still remember now the first time I came um, into the hall, uh, seeing the grounds that Anne had developed, 
So many people will have visited the grounds over the years. Very few of them, they might have known about the hall, but very, very few of them will have known about um, Anne Lister for various reasons. And I just fell in love with the place. Um, it, it's really weird when I come down from the top car park, as I approach Shivdom, I just kind of see it. And anybody that's been here will, will know. Um, it's just got a really strange, oh, it just does something to you. I just want to hug it. And I know that's really mad. I mean, my, my arm span, it's not exactly huge, is it? And I can't, clearly can't hu hug a house. But I always just want to hug it. It just makes me feel, I don't know. It's a magical place. If you've been, you'll know. If, 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 if you haven't, you've yet to experience it. In 2010, the Maxine Peak um, dramatisation um, came out, which, which was fantastic. It uh, looked more at Anne Lister's relationship with uh, Mariana, we'll call her Belcom, uh, give her her own name. Uh, and that was wonderful. And then um, not long after that, I started working at the Pankhurst Centre in Manchester, and that's where I met Jill Liddington. Um, and Jill and I uh, share something I, I think really wonderfully special. <laughs> We're both um, very geeky for um, uh, votes for women and uh, all things Anne Lister. Um, and for me, I mean, what could be better? Uh, we've got a, an incredibly knowledgeable, uh, experienced feminist historian who shared two of my greatest passions. Um, Jill and I kept in touch over the years. Um, and I had the best analyst teacher I could have had. My very limited knowledge um, grew immensely uh, with, with Jill sharing her knowledge with me. And then uh, I've become an occasional volunteer here at Shivdon, um, which is wonderful. I get to share my limited knowledge with, with visitors to the, the hall. And um, of course, following that, we had uh, Sally Wainwright's uh, Gentleman Jack last year, which many of you will have seen, probably all of you will have seen. And Sally, of course, brought the whole Anne Lister story to um, our screens. Uh, a wonderful dramatisation. Um, we're looking forward immensely to uh, series two, just whenever they can get that filmed and, and, and on the small screen. Um, and following that, uh, of course, there was a lot of interest where just maybe a few people locally had heard of Anne Lister. Now it's gone global and so many more people have, have heard of, of Anne and her story. And she's inspired so many people in the way that she inspired me all those years ago and, and, and everyone else locally who knew about her. Of course, as the Anne Lister birthday weekend has sprung up um, in the last year, 15 months. I've been so fortunate to work with a brilliant team there. Um, we've got great things planned because they're, they're delayed from April, but um, don't worry, we're really busy behind the scenes. We've got so much planned for just whenever uh, we can we can get everyone over to the UK and uh, it's going to be fantastic you know stuff happening here at Shibden and all around Halifax. So why is Anne Lister so important to me um, as a gay woman? Um, I think her courage, her passion, her desire, she was just so brave. She, she didn't conform to what was expected of her uh, as a woman of her time, born in 1791. Um, you know, the early 19th century, women just weren't supposed to behave like that, but she didn't care. She, she, she knew her own heart and she stuck to what she believed in. Um, she was an in intrepid traveller. She wrote about all of these aspects in her diaries in great detail, as we know. Um, Anne uh, also wrote her will, as, as we know from some of Jill's uh, writing. Anne Walker and Anne Lister would have spent many a romantic hour here at Shibden when they lived together, writing wills. What else do you do when you're moneyed and uh, have these matters to sort out? And uh, if it's all right with you, I'm just going to read a bit of um, Anne's will. It really makes me um, smile and it makes Laura smile, I know too. It's very Anne Lister. She um, has all the formal <laughs> bits that you have to have in a will, but um, she also has a bit that's very Anne. I'm going to read this out of Jill's Female Fortune book. Um, uh, of course, the book that inspired Gentleman Jack, we have to say that. Um, so it starts off as any will would. Um, it's got the formalities and then Anne goes on to say, this is made the ninth day of May in the year of our Lord, 1836, so made on the 9th of May, 1836. And she says, I give and devise all my estate called Shibden Hall, here behind us, and all and singular the messwidge, farms, lands, tenements, and real estate whatsoever and wheresoever which I am in any wise seized of or entitled to or have power to dispose of unto my friend, my friend, Miss Anne Walker, <laughs> who is now living with me at Shibden Hall aforesaid. I declare my said estates shall be in trust for John Lister Esquire, the only son of the late John Lister of Swansea. 
Provided, lastly, and I do hereby declare that in case of marriage of the said Anne Walker, all and singular the trust estates, monies and premises herein before given to or reposed in her shall thenceforth cease and determine in the same manner to all intents, constructions and purposes as if the said Anne Walker should have then departed <laughs> this life. And then it's then signed by Anne. And it makes me smile because it's so Anne Lister. Basically, Anne Walker, if you dare do what all those other women who have broken my heart over the years do and marry a man, that's it, you're gone, you're dead, you never existed. You lose Shibden, you lose the estate, you lose everything, anything to do with me. And I just think that's so Anne Lister, she was going to have the final say even in death. Of course, that was written in 1836. What Anne wouldn't have, have expected is that her demise was going to come very, very relatively soon afterwards in, in, in 1840. Um, Anne and Anne went travelling. Uh, she was an intrepid traveller, as we know. And I'm just going to share with you part of her final known diary entry. Uh, she had been travelling for some months um, with Anne Walker across Europe into Russia. Uh, Anne was desperate to leave Moscow, but they had to wait until February in 1840 before leaving. They travelled in a kibitka, a Russian horse wagon. Uh, they had one for themselves and the servants, and a married couple um, from Russia who accompanied them also went in their own kibitka. And Anne's last uh, known diary entry was from the 11th of August, 1840, 14 months after she left home. Just six weeks later, Anne would be dead. Anne ran out of room in this volume, and there is no record of any volume after this. However, it's wondered if another volume or further notes do exist. She wrote prolifically, daily, and it's unlikely that she didn't write anything of her last six weeks. Anne died, as we know, on this very day, the 22nd of September, 1840. This transcription of part of Anne's last known diary entry from the third, Thursday the 11th of August 1840 is courtesy of Lee Mitchinson from iknowmyownheart.co.uk and for those of you who, who know uh, or have seen or are familiar with Anne's diaries you'll know just how difficult they can be to read and try and make sense of and her last known entry was no different yet you might I don't know if we can just pick up on the camera this is her last known diary entry I don't know if we can see that but to you and I, to the untrained eye, sorry Anne, just looks like gobbledygook to me. I, 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 I'm sorry to all those amazing code breakers all around the world who are transcribing along West Yorkshire Archive Service, transcribing this, this incredible work. To you it isn't gobbledygook, it is just something else for you to try and figure out. <clears throat> it's really difficult to read. <clears throat> um, and one of the things I love so much about Anne is her intrepid spirit. She travelled for a hobby and seemed to love to explore and learn about all new, new and different cultures. This, her last diary entry, continues to highlight this so well, and so I've taken some bits of it that I particularly like to, to share how she described her travels. So she writes, At 7.35, Yuzham, fine river, nearish left. Ascend highish left bank, above it and go upwards along its broad, boulder-bedded, islandy, streamy course forever through lanes of alder and hazel, every now and then in our eyes, bits of deep mud every now and then. At 8.15 or eight and a quarter, as she writes, at a local village, orchards, vine covered, trees, alders, something illegible. At 8.20, close up, then ascend again on higher ground, always in the same village, no houses to be seen, all hid. Fine river viewing downwards amid lower green wooded, rounded beautiful hills and upwards amid higher such hills, beautiful valley. At 8.55, at the large, beautiful green of the village, with several picturesque, goodish, galleried, illegible word, scattered round, a light at one of them. And so the entry for the day continues, with Anne describing their travels, the views, the sights and the scenery, in the same detail we're used to in her incredibly detailed diaries that she wrote from the age of 15, the hills, the fords, the streams, the beautiful green valleys, the buildings, the different kinds of trees, the Indian corn that we'd better know now as sweet corn. I figure travelling with Anne Lister must have been really, really fascinating. She talks of time wasted in one village when, and I quote, David does not know the road. Get a man to go with us to the village. He now says it is six instead of three hours from here to somewhere we can't read, and six days from here to, again, somewhere else we can't read. Terrible, and now I'm lost here now. It's so Anne Lister, everything she did had to be now, it was always in such a hurry. We remember Anne Lister today on her anniversary, the commemoration of her death, but also as a huge celebration 
What a remarkable legacy for so many people, but particularly for gay women all around the world. She's given so many gay women a real purpose, a validation of their own sense of who they are, and that's simply priceless. Whether Anne wanted her diaries to be found, she could never have seen the, the legacy that she has left. She's given gay women a confidence that they could never have had before, never imagined. Anne Lister, what a woman, what a legacy, and I'm just so pleased that we all get to share her now. Thank you, Anne Lister, for all that you continue to do for us. For, through all of us, your spirit, your legacy lives on. We're going to move now to a more reflective part of the broadcast. The Mayor of Calderdale, Councillor Dot Foster, will lay a wreath on behalf of all of us to give thanks for Anne's life. We'll then invite you to take part in a moment of reflection, where you can reflect for a few moments on the legacy of Anne Lister in your life as an individual. While you do that, you'll be listening to some music that Anne Lister herself wrote and composed. It comes from a diary entry of January the 11th, 1824, and it's a ballad for M. M, of course, being Mariana Lawton. This version is arranged by Emily Nyman and Lynn Berry, who are a couple in Vermont, and performed by Emily Nyman. Their version's called Ballad for the Ball. We hope that you enjoy this very special moment as you reflect on the courageous trail that Anne blazed for all of us. Hello, I'm Councillor Dot Foster. I'm the current Mayor of Calderdale. I'm very proud to be able to stand here at Shibden Hall to help celebrate the life of Anne Lister, who died 180 years ago, ago today, Tuesday the 22nd of September 2020. We would have liked to have gathered together to celebrate Anne's life, but sadly that is not possible. However, we are still able to celebrate and reflect on her life together online. We are very fortunate to have Anne Lister's heritage in Calderdale and are rightly proud of her many accomplishments. Anne Lister was born in 1791 and was a landowner, entrepreneur, scholar, traveller, mountaineer, lesbian and perhaps most famously diarist. She died aged just 49 on the 22nd of September 1840 on her travels in Georgia. Her fascinating diaries, entirely written in code, which took many years of study to decipher, are a wonderful insight into her life, loves, business interests and politics. Anne's diaries are considered to be of such historical significance that they are inscribed on the UNESCO Memory of the World Register. We are very lucky in Calderdale to have the home of Anne Lister, Shibden Hall, nestling in our wonderful countryside. Shibden Hall was much altered by Anne during her residence here and is a lasting testament to her vision and inspiration. Shipton Hall is open for visitors and although the visit experience is a little different from before Covid, you can still book to see Anne's home and learn more of her incredible story. More details are available on the Calderdale Council's website. It would be remiss of me not to mention the incredible work of Sally Wainwright, author of Gentleman Jack, who brought Anne Lister's story to our screens. Anne now has a worldwide following and I know many fans from across the globe would have been in Calderdale to share this significant anniversary with us had circumstances been different. I was very privileged to be able to award Sally Wainwright the freedom of the borough of Calderdale for her services to the borough earlier this year, just before lockdown. Sally's work to capture Anne's unique story has been instrumental in raising the profile of Anne, Shibden Hall, Halifax and the whole of Calderdale and we remain immensely grateful to her for this work. I'm very much forward, looking forward to series two when it is screened. In Calderdale, we are very proud that Anne's story is known about, across the globe and has impacted so many lives. There will be a service of remembrance and celebration of Anne's life at Halifax Minster this evening at 7 p.m. The, the service will be live streamed for those unable to attend in person. I'm honored to have been asked to lay a wreath at Shibden Hall today in Anne's memory. We are thankful for the impact she has had on so many lives and in particular the positive impact on the LGBT community. I would like to invite you to take a moment to give thanks for Anne Lister's life, commemorate her death and reflect on the important legacy that she has left us here in Calderdale and across the world. Singer now, great folks look down on me, but better hearts have 
and high then low to bless old Alderley. Right on for now for many a year, as prosperous may it stand, as well respected far and near as any of all its land. Through all ye land my blood can run, hide better veins than theirs. And when old folks be dead and done, as good may be the heirs. Come join ye all there in my song, all hearts wish he the same, that health and wealth and life belong to all the Stanley name. And now we all must separate such days to see no more. Let many others celebrate as we have done. God bless you all, both young and old, and all this merry set. For many times it shall be told, a merry are never met. What do I love about Anne Lister? Where do I start? The thing I love about Anne Lister is her zest for life. I love the fact that Anne knew herself to be accepted by God. I love her courage, her curiosity, her intellect, her hilarious snobbishness. I love about Anne Lister that she was totally nonconformist, she was just totally herself. A woman, early 19th century, travelled widely in the UK and also abroad. Women of her generation just didn't do that. She was very determined to get what she wanted and she was determined on how she was going to accomplish that and the light that is reflected in the diaries. She's so certain and unapologetic about her sexuality. She was always her own person despite societal attitudes towards women at the time that she lived in. Knowing there was a Halifax woman who visited these exotic and far-flung places under her own steam was a very inspiring example to follow. My favourite Anne Lister related item has got to be her diaries because without them we wouldn't really know anything about her. As well as all the saucy bits she also writes loads about books and reading and her love for libraries which is a library work is really exciting for me. They provide a really important historical account and also lift the lid on Anne's life, her feelings and her emotions and, and how she thought as a woman and as a businesswoman. My favourite piece of Anne Lister's collection is um, this pressed flower. The staining of the, the flower you can see on the pages. Um, and I just think it's nice because I think it's got a little story to it. My favourite Anne Lister related place is the town of Halifax. Walking in Anne Lister's footsteps, visiting places she wrote about in her diaries, places she knew and loved. My favourite Anne Lister item is here, it's one of her travel diaries. I love the fact that she's put her conversion table of millimetres and centimetres, very right Anne. My favourite Anne related place is right here in the Holdsworth Chapel where the Lister family vault is and it's my favourite place because it's where I've met so many of you whose lives have been affected by Anne's life. Anne's legacy I think is to inspire women to have a zest for life. Anne Lister's legacy for me as a gay woman um, it's to follow, follow your heart um, don't hold back, don't be held back by society uh, or otherwise, uh, don't be restrained, the world is your oyster. She's so important in terms of queer history and particularly lesbian history. She calls to us from across the centuries down the years to live our best lives and be our best selves. And what's really exciting at the moment is the people from outside Calderdale are finding out about her. Anne Lister put Halifax on the map. Her magnificent diaries are now recorded in UNESCO's Memory of the World Register. And Sally Wainwright's Gentleman Jack gave Anne Lister global fame. Wow. If I had to describe Anne Lister in one word, it would be feisty. I would describe Anne Lister as powerful. Anne is authentic. Anne is determined. Anne Lister is fascinating. Anne Lister is inspirational. Anne Lister is awesome.
Thank you for joining us here today. It's a really special feeling to know that people are tuning in worldwide to join us in celebrating Anne's life and legacy. If you'd like to see more this evening, there will be a memorial service broadcast live from Halifax Minster at 7 p.m. You can find that on Visit Calderdale's website and social media. Once again, we're really sorry that you weren't able to come and join us here in person. So we're going to leave you with a little video that reminds you of what awaits you when you can come and visit us here in Calderdale in happier times. nearly 180 years since Anne Lister's death but she's more relevant than ever and what do I love about Anne Lister well for one she's so entertaining if we read her books or watch the brilliant gentleman Jack it's enthralling entertaining and informative because Anne Lister was prepared to fight to achieve what she wanted to achieve in life and she insisted on being who she really was she overcame all obstacles in her way and I think that's a fantastic, powerful message today. And where do I love that's associated with Anne Lister? Well, Shipton Hall at Halifax. And within Shipton Hall, I love the Red Room. Because I think it inspired the Red Room in Jane Eyre. So uh, if I had to sum up Anne Lister in one word, it would be inspirational. My favourite thing about Anne Lister is her self-confidence, her curiosity and her incredible sense of adventure. My favorite Ann Lister place, her home, Shivden Hall. My one word for describing Ann, inspiring. Mm -hmm.